commentator Richard Neville has died at the age of 74. The co-founder of the counterculture magazine Oz was a controversial figure in Australia and the UK in the 1960s. This is how journalist Peter Luck reported on Richard Neville back in 1970. To say that Richard Neville found Australian censorship a bit of a giggle is putting it mildly. But the irony of the whole situation is that in Britain, where the Wizard of Oz has become a sort of Rupert Murdoch of the underground press, people were supposed to have a more enlightened attitude towards kinky magazines. London was supposed to have a permissive society that could cope with left-wing politics, drugs and the so-called sexual freedom. In Australia, Neville was no stranger to the vagaries of obscenity laws. He was one of the three enfants terribles who created the original Oz, which, one way or another, left an indelible mark on Australian publishing. The other two were Richard Walsh, now editor of the Sunday Review, and Martin Sharp, the painter and cartoonist who returned to Sydney from England last year. The Oz they produced was crude, witty, sexy, cruel, and occasionally brilliant. And above all, a change from the generally moribund newspapers and magazines that have survived it. Of course, it got them into trouble, and Sharp, Walsh and Neville were hit with their first obscenity charges. Oz, which had been launched on April Fool's Day 1962, was now just two years old and destined to become a household name. On consideration of the whole of the evidence, and having in mind the provisions of subsection 3 of section 3, I find that the magazine, Exhibit 1, is obscene, according to the ordinary meaning of that term. It is indeed a serious thing to corrupt or pollute the minds of the young. The defendant is sentenced to six months imprisonment. The Oz people were somewhat chastened at first, but they managed to sustain a healthy or unhealthy contempt for authority and soon got an appeal underway. Accordingly, in my view, the Crown has not discharged the onus it bears to establish that the magazine, or any part of it, is obscene within the meaning of the Act. Consequently, I would uphold these appeals and wash the convictions. They took it all in their irreverent stride. Most of the people associated with that early magazine seem to have grown older and taken on more conservative if somewhat less dangerous attitudes. But Richard Neville plunged headlong into the permissive society. In London, he launched a new Oz, less politically orientated than the old one, and more like some of the American underground magazines. Some called it Way Out, and immediately dated themselves by about 10 years. There are plenty of phallic symbols and articles by Germaine Greer. So, not surprisingly, it's the sort of Reader's Digest of the play power subculture. It's flourished now for some years, and it's said to have a circulation of 50,000. But apparently where the editors overstepped the mark was with a special issue compiled by schoolchildren. An advertisement in the magazine invited young people between the ages of 15 and 19 to contribute. Unfortunately for the editors, the response was rather better than expected. Parents, police and school teachers decided that children should be heard and not obscene, and Richard Neville incurred the wrath of the courts once again. Stay with us. We'll take a look.